The functioning of a direct seeding mulch-based cropping system relies on a high and fast turnover of organic matter. Plants, through photosynthesis, convert sunlight energy into chemical energy, which is stored in carbohydrate molecules. These photosynthetic products, such as sugars, are produced from carbon dioxide and water. They are the main constituents of above and below ground biomass. The above ground biomass, produced in abundance by the diversity of plants, regularly flows into the surface litter, while the below ground biomass directly provides the soil with organic matter, such as living roots and their exudates. Plant residues are pierced and fragmented by the soil macrofauna. Earthworms bury the plant fragments in depth together with excrements from small animals. The further advanced the fragmentation is, the smaller the organisms that process plant residues. By increasing the surface of decaying material, fragmentation enables the soil microflora to colonize plant residues and become highly active. Soil fungi and bacteria are fundamental actors of organic matter decomposition. By feeding on residues, they release mineral nutrients and renew the stock of soil organic matter. Decomposition patterns vary based on the raw plant material. Leaves from legumes are rich in nitrogen and soluble compounds such as simple carbohydrates and proteins. They are quickly decomposed and mineralized by the soil microflora. Leaves, and more particularly stems from grasses, have a lower nitrogen content with higher cellulose content, which makes them decompose and mineralize more slowly. Plant components that are rich in phenolic compounds, wax and lipids, and especially lignified material, decompose and mineralize very slowly. Thus, the diversity of plant residues induces a diversity of molecules in the soil organic matter. The soil organic matter is stabilized against mineralization or leaching through three main processes. First, a part of soil organic matter is selectively preserved in the acquisition of a biochemical stability. Molecules from decomposition gain biochemical stability through the process of progressive humification. The second process is the adsorption onto minerals such as clay, iron, and aluminum oxides. The third process is the physical protection with aggregates. These three processes may happen simultaneously in time, and their relative contribution to soil organic matter stabilization varies depending on the climate, the soil type, and the soil management. Some molecules of the soil organic matter can be biochemically stabilized through the humification process. During this process, molecules gain molecular weight and their carbon content increases while their oxygen content decreases. There are three possible paths for humification. Microorganisms absorb the small soluble molecules from decomposition. They transform them and secrete them again in the form of stable humic and fulvic acid. Phenolic compounds from the decomposition are polycondensed into larger and larger molecules. Under the action of earthworms, residual lignin is incorporated in the soil adsorption complex without much change, which gives inherited human. Humic and fulvic acid are stable against mineralization, which is why we talk about biochemical recalcitrants. Besides, all kinds of soil organic molecules may be stabilized by adsorption on the mineral soil. Under the combined action of climate, water, plants, roots, and microorganisms, the parent material releases clay particles in the soil horizon. The bioturbation from the soil macrofauna, and more particularly earthworms, 
enables the mixing together of the soil organic matter, which is produced in the topsoil, and mineral particles, which come from deeper soil horizons. Clay, metal oxides, and soil organic matter are negatively charged, but they can bind together through bridges made of cations with more than one positive charge, like calcium, iron, and aluminum. These interactions between mineral soil, organic matter, and mineral ions form the clay humus complex, also called soil absorption complex. Stabilization of soil organic matter is also ensured by its spatial inaccessibility to microorganisms through the process of soil aggregation. The process of soil aggregation is driven by the intense activity of the soil biological activity, in particular microorganisms, earthworms, and plant roots. Silt particles and fine organic matter stick together with clay humus complex, encapsulating bacterial colonies. This primary form of soil aggregation is called microaggregation. Soil microaggregates are then bound together with sand particles, decaying roots and leaves and bacterial colonies in a second level of aggregation called macroaggregation. Within soil aggregates, the soil organic matter is physically protected from active microorganisms and fluxes of oxygen. Microaggregates offer the best protection to associated soil organic matter. In DMC systems, soil aggregation is fueled by high biomass inputs to the soil and driven by healthy biological activity. Soil aggregates contribute to protect the soil organic matter and are themselves protected from erosion by the soil vegetation cover. To sum up the story, well-managed DMC systems should provide the soil with a continuous and important flow of diverse and fresh organic matter. A fraction of this active organic matter is quickly mineralized, while the other may be stabilized through the three main processes. Progressive humification, adsorption into the mineral soil, and protection within soil aggregates. Each one of these processes offers a different kind of protection to the active organic matter, and they may be combined. Keep in mind that stabilization processes are highly conditioned by the intensity of soil biological activity. Thus, high biomass inputs associated with various ways of organic matter stabilization will lead to a long-term carbon sequestration in DMC systems. The increase in stable soil organic carbon over time under DMC systems plays a fundamental role in the replenishment of soil fertility and acquisition of ecosystem resiliency. The cultivated ecosystem functions similarly to a natural forest ecosystem. In conventional plow based systems, biomass return to the soil is insufficient, irregular, and not diversified enough. Consequently, there is not any supply of carbon from plant biomass active organic matter, and the biological activity is very low. Thus, the processes of humification, adsorption, and soil aggregation can hardly keep going on, and the small amount of fresh organic matter is poorly protected. Moreover, soil tillage and disturbance speed up the mineralization of fresh organic matter, reducing the fraction that could enter the soil organic matter. This leads to a progressive depletion of soil organic matter, which is also reinforced by tillage-induced erosion. Instead of a carbon sequestration, we have a carbon depletion. Soils are degraded, and their degradation is even faster under tropical aggressive climate. 
Because of soil organic matter depletion and impact of tillage operations, their structure collapses.